What's going on guys and welcome to the 60th Xamarin Android tutorial. So this video is going to be a little bit of a continuation of the last in which we talked about fragments, all right? So remember if you haven't if you haven't watched the last videos, remember to go back a few and just get caught up with fragments. If you have, then remember what we were working on was just kind of playing around with fragments and getting used to using transactions and and all within one activity and kind of just playing around with dragging them up and moving them around with some cool animations and, and whatnot. So uh, do go back if you haven't messed with this because I will assume that you're gonna know how to do um, some of the basic stuff with fragments now. So uh, continuing on though, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna be try another way to actually to to interact with fragments. And what we did, just to refresh your memory, to actually trans tra to, to take fragments and replace them with other ones, was we actually used the, the hide and show method, okay? So what we did, remember is we actually just added three fragments to the fragment container which is held inside the main activity of course so there's a frame layout that is that holds all of these fragments so they're all there at one time and then we simply just hide and show the ones the hide the the, the ones that we don't want to see and then uh, show the ones that we do using this method right here so when a fragment comes in it says okay well we'll make a transaction and then what it does is actually hides the current fragment which you keep track of right here and then it shows the fragment that we want to to actually show, all right? And then it adds it to the back side, of course, because it, the user probably wants to hit the back button. And then we actually um, have a little bit of a stack so that we can keep track of it. So the benefit of this is that, that the activity always stays alive. And what I mean by that is if we come up and pull this up, if we pull this up to with the, uh, the, the developer uh, Android, what we can see is that the fragment is added and then all this is called chronologically of course and then the fragment as active is actually just right here and it basically just stays here and only two things that happen uh, that what whether or not what the user does or what what the programmer wants to do is basically if it removes it from or is replaced it just simply gets destroyed now if it actually comes into here it's actually a possibility that it can get removed or replaced and then as long as it's added to the back stack what will happen is it'll come into on pause stop and then destroy view and then it'll actually come into limbo and then when the user hits the back button it'll come back in here and on create view will be called however none of this happens for us and that's because all this fragment is active we never actually replace or remove it remember that we're just hiding and showing the fragments that we want to see so this none, none of this happens and that's all nice and everything but what what happens is the memory usage goes up and that's because we have all the fragments active at one time and there is a compromise with this, of course, with memory, as there is with many things with, you know, Android and any mobile development is you always got to be about memory. So now if you have small fragments, the way that we were doing it before really isn't a big deal. And then they don't hold many data, much data, and, and you really don't have to worry too much about it. However, mo more than likely, fragments are going to have a lot of data in it. Maybe I have some data sets, images, and some just a lot of objects that are really uh, memory intensive. And that's when you want to actually use replace. And then what replace does is only let one fragment active at one time and then simply just puts it in limbo and destroys its view and then brings it back here and needs to create its view and, and put all that stuff back in the memory. All right, so it is a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more of a hassle to do with a programmer, but you do get the compromising, you get, do get the benefit of that it is a little bit more, a little more memory conservative. All right, so let's go ahead and demonstrate. I'm gonna demonstrate how to do that using the replace. So the first thing we wanna do guys is we wanna make a, a function called replace fragment. All right, and it's gonna take a support fragment type and we'll call it fragment as a local variable. And we're basically gonna do a lot of it, what we're gonna do here in the, in, the, in, the, in the video, or I'm sorry, in the previous video, what we did with the other method show fragment. Now, that's going to be, of course, if it is already visible, we don't want to show it. That would, of course, be redundant. So we'll do that. Now, if we, if it isn't showing, then we want to make a transaction. And like I said in, in, in the beginning of this video, if you guys haven't, if you're not familiar what a support fragment manager is or what a transaction is, be sure to go back a few videos and check that out. You'll be a lot more familiar with it at that point. So now that we had a transaction, before what we would do was like add or hide what we want to see and what we don't want to see, but now we're going to actually do replace. All right. Now with replace, what's going to happen is we're actually literally replacing the fragment that is in there and putting a new one and only one inside of the container. 
Now the way we do that is pretty simple. We just got to pass it the actual container that it holds, which is simply just a frame layout. And then of course the fragment that we want to actually replace it with, which is the fragment that the programmer has passed in. And now we do want to make sure that we, that we actually commit because without that it won't work. So we want to make sure that we do commit. And then of course we want to make sure that we have our, we are keeping track of our current fragment. And then last but not least, but right here, we'll actually add it to the back stack. So that's adding, and we'll just do null. We'll add it to the back stack, which is remember this right here. So when it's added to the back stack, that means that when, when it gets called back into view, it'll be right here and it'll come back and on create view will be called again. So in other words, in any other time, what will happen is this, the fragment is completely destroyed if you don't add it to the back stack and then it'll come all the way up here and actually have to on and attach and on create um, all over again. All right, so now that, now that that's done, what we can do, remember that we call our all of our fragments up here on the right with the with the action bar and then using the overflow, remember that? So when that is called, that's called actually up here in the on options item selected. So instead of calling show fragment, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna call replace fragment. And then down here, remember that we had our implementation for the back pressed, which is well, all we do, is, all we do is, is to check to see if the fragment if, if it has any fragments on the pot, on the actual stack. And if it does, we take care of it, okay? However, with the replace, that kind of, all that behavior is actually taking care of it, care of us, to take care of it for us, okay? So it's taking care of, we don't have to worry about it. Now, in that case, what we need to do is we simply just need to call the base implementation, which is, just to make it more clear, we'll actually do base.onBackPress. And that's all we need to do. All right, so that's all taken care of. Now, if we run this right now, we're actually gonna get an error. And then I'm gonna show you that error. That way you can see it. And then uh, if it ever happens to you, hopefully you'll be a little more familiar with how to fix it. All right, so we have fragment one. And if we call fragment two, there's the error that we're talking about. So fragment already added. So fragment two is already added to the fragment manager, uh, the, the stack on it. And what that means is, well, literally what it means is it's already been added and that's exactly what's happening. So if you come up here, remember that we've already added these, fr these fragments. And remember the replace is not, that's not how it works. Replace, it doesn't need it, you know, the other way we were just adding it all at one time and then we we're just, just uh, hiding and showing the ones that we didn't want to see or wanted to see. Now what we're doing is we're actually replacing it. So there's only should be one fragment in the container. And that's why we don't need to add two and three. We only want one. And then when we call two, one will be taken out of, and then two will be, will, will replace one. And like I said, all that behavior is taken care of uh, for us with, with the replace method. So now if we call, let's pull this up. Oops. So now when we call this, what should happen is everything should work just fine. And then uh, it wouldn't really, you're not gonna really gonna see too much of a difference until we actually start adding breakpoints, what we'll, we'll do here in a second. Well, we can see that it is in fact working the way we expect it to. Now what we wanna do is let's, let's actually add a few breakpoints. And this is fragment one, the class fragment one. And remember that in the life cycle, we have on create that gets called and on create view gets called indefinitely. Now, when it's actually added to the back stack and then, and then and when the user pushes the back button and goes back to that fragment, on create view should get called and then come down and traverse through the all of these methods. So let's make sure that's actually happening. Let's kind of like, you know, just go through it and see firsthand what's going on. And if that's in fact what is what is happening. And notice that this won't happen when we're doing the hide and show because none of this, all of it, the, the fragment is only created one time and it stays in memory and never gets called uh, again until we actually destroy it. So on create gets called, on create view gets called initially, which is perfectly fine. Now we have fragment one. So we call fragment two, which puts fragment one on the back stack. Remember that's what well, we do that down. We do that down over here. So we've added fragment two, or I'm sorry, fragment one to the back stack. So remember it is now right here waiting to be called back. Now if we come over to here and we hit the back button, 
yes, in fact, on create view does get called, on create does not get called, just on create view, which is exactly what the diagram illustrates. All right, guys. So what, what that means is basically that the fragment is semi destroyed and then the on create view is called again. And this, this allows for a less memory intensive application. But we do have to handle some stuff, of course, if the view is being recreated, then keep in mind that we're going to have to actually recreate some of the views and, and do any or save the instance of it at least if we want to, okay? So if we want the on create, the, we, and the on create is where we want to initialize a data set if we have a list view or, or a recycler view, uh, they all have data sets, right? So that's, that's where we want to initialize it since the on create is only called once throughout the activity in the replace method, okay? So let's actually, let's, let's leave these. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to the old way of doing it just to really further illustrate the difference. We'll call this method. So this is all this one. All we're doing is actually reverting back to where it was before in the previous videos, just to illustrate the main differences of replace and then hiding and showing. All right, so that should do it there. We still have those breakpoints up. So what what we should expect to happen is that remember that the active the fragment is active all three of them at one time and since we're never actually removing and replacing them they're just going to stay there and nothing's going to happen. So on create gets called and then on create view gets called initially. Now remember last time what happened was when we actually added fragment or fragment one to the back stack and then fragment two came and we actually when we hit back on the fragment ones on create view got called but notice that it's not called in this case and that's because it never actually got a chance to do it. Therefore, the view is still there and it's very handy and quick for the programmer. However, like I said before, it, it is a little more memory intensive. So just, just keep that in mind when you're using these two ways to do to actually interact with fragments and transactions. Now, there's something that I wanna further illustrate with activity, uh, config the configuration changes is when you actually rotate the application, what happens to fragments. and you'll notice that what happens is some things kind of actually go haywire. So what we're gonna do, this was getting called right here. So what we're gonna do is further illustrate that. And the way we can do that is we actually come into the AXML file of fragment one. And let's go ahead and change that to an edit text so that we can actually see a little more what I mean by the configuration changes. 25 DP. And then of course we'll make the background like just a just a white so that it stands out a little more. All right, so something like that looks good. So when an act when a, when a configuration changes, when the when the orientation changes, the activity is destroyed, and therefore the fragments that are that are basically the children of the activity are also destroyed. So this is really not good because the fact that if we have some data in it and the user has entered some data and for some reason changes the orientation, all of their data will be just destroyed in memory. So that's actually a big problem when we're using fragments and a lot of the programmers, you know, kind of start tearing their hair out is like, you know, what's going on? Why is it, why is it doing that? I mean, it's basically just, you know, useless at this point. So. It is a little bit of uh, a little cumbersome, but there are ways to fix it and it is part of the Android design. And of course they've, they've implemented ways to actually fix this or, or to basically work with it. And all of it is of course, because of the, the configuration changes that just um, the way Android's always been is the activity is destroyed and recreated. So if we actually come into here and we can see that, you know, if we add something that we want the user, Joe Rock, what we can do is see that when we actually rotate the device, look what happens. It's actually totally destroyed and then the base, the default text is actually replaced with it. So the whole view is created once again, all right? And that's something that's, got, that's basically a problem, of course. And of course, there, like I said, there are ways to deal with this, all right? So in the next video, that's what we're gonna be looking at. We're gonna look at our, the um, configuration changes and what to do and the, the, the things that we can do with the fragment to save the data, therefore that we don't use, lose any of it, 
of course, and there are a few ways to do it, and then I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate a few. That way then you can decide for yourself which way is a little better for your application and how to save your data when then the configuration changes and you know keep it all keep it all more fluid for the user in that case all right so that is something that we're going to be going over in the next video but this video like i said pertains to replacing so now you should have a little bit better idea of the differences between adding and showing fragments and then just replacing them entirely all right thanks for watching guys